All right, guys, welcome back to the video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to go over how to troubleshoot in a network. So I've been asked this question so many times. Uh, how do you troubleshoot, Wally? How do you troubleshoot? How do you do this? How do you do this? Um, now we're going to go ahead and make a video, completely complete guide. Uh, we're going to go through a troubleshooting problem and we'll work through it together and we'll kind of uh, go step by step on the method that I prefer. And if you guys don't know, the method I prefer is always going by the OSI model. So we're going from layer one to layer two to layer three. We're gonna work our way up. We never just like look at specific things. We always go by this specific model. This is what I prefer. Obviously you guys might have different models and if you guys do have different models of troubleshooting, please leave them down in the comments. But I believe this to be the most effective and the less headache inducing way of troubleshooting because it's it's checking out the vitals before you can go into the more in-depth things. And I believe this is to be the, the most effective way of sort of troubleshooting a network because it, it really gives you an understanding of, okay, is layer one working? Yes or no? Like if, it, if it's not working, you don't move up the levels. There's no point in moving up the levels. You're wasting time. You first have to check the basics, okay? Uh, and a lot of people don't understand this. Like if you guys don't check the basics and you're going over like these higher level stuff, so like you're checking firewalls and stuff and, and, and the layer one is down or layer two, there's an issue with the ARP. You have to first figure that problem out before you can work your way up. So um, we're gonna jump right into this, um, guys. Uh, this is going to be a tree. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use GNS3 as my software or packet tracer. It depends on, on what I'm feeling. But we'll go ahead and create a troubleshooting session and we'll work through this. So uh, let's hop on to the let's hop into the camera. All right. Welcome back, everybody. So today we're going to be doing like a troubleshooting session. Um, and basically all we're going to do is we want to be able to ping from this router to this router. And keep in mind, they're going to have different IP addresses that are in different subnets. So um, you can guys see here, you can... See, this is a slash 30, and this one looks to be a slash 30 as well, but there are different subnets. So that's just something that we have to keep a mental note of for later on. But in the meantime, let's first troubleshoot layer one before we ever get to that third layer. So um, for step one, first things first is we'll go into these routers and we'll see what the commands are. So um, the main thing that I just want you guys to know is that, you know, when we go into these routers, we always want to check layer one. That's the first step when it comes to logging in. You don't want to waste any time with looking at into anything else. So if you run the command show interfaces description, you can see all these ports are admin down. So and according to this description, we have 00, 00, 10, and 00. So we'll turn up all the ports on our end because that's what we have control over at this current time. So we'll go ahead and do that. So uh, the, I, I had the host names incorrectly set up, so I'll just change the host names right now. So if we do configure terminal, uh, we'll do host name. We'll make it R1. Um, I just wanted to match these host names that we have as well. And I'll log into all of these. And we can take care of that. So here. This one is going to be configure terminal host name R2. And then we'll just change this one to R3 just, just so it matches. And this one's already R3. So um, the first step that I like to do is just turn up the ports that are required. So our ports are these ones. So we'll go ahead and turn them up. And we'll also add the IP address as well. So we'll go ahead and do conf uh, interface fast ethernet. Zero, 00 and we'll go ahead and do a no shut and at the same time we'll just configure IP address to save us some time 192.168.0.1255.255.255.252 so go ahead and do that and then we'll also knock this one out on this side as well so you guys can see here this is zero, 00 and this is 10 so let's just knock this one out as well uh, so we'll start off with the first interface, fast ethernet, zero, zero. Uh, we'll do a no shut, and then we'll add the IP address. And that's going to be 192.168.0.1.0.2.255.255.255.252. So now that we configured uh, the IP address on this side and this side, hypothetically, if the ports are up, we'd be able to ping. So the first thing I like to do at this point is let's just run a ping, right? Let's just see if it works. And if it works, we're happy, right? So we're gonna ping our, our IP and nothing comes up. So um, what I like to do now 
is just to see what why is my IP not pinging? And what I presume to be is the port's probably down. I'm not able to ping my own IP. As you can see here, the port is down. And if you go to R2, if you go to R2 here, we'll see that our port, let's see if it's up or down. You can see our port is up, up. So our port is admin up, but we're not getting any traffic in. So what could be the reason for this? Um, like I said, it's going to be a layer one issue. And the way to look at this is, so if you go back to this router, um, there's a really nice tool within um, GNS3. And it's called showed node information. And from here, it'll tell us what's directly connected to the port that we say that should be connected to. So um, we can see here, um, if you look at slot zero, which is going to be the fast Ethernet zero zero port, there's it's nothing, there's nothing connected to it. See, zero zero is empty. But when we go into R1, we have it up, but this one is down. And this is and this is this is the one that it's it, it has connection to, which is actually it's going to be two zero. So fast Ethernet two zero is connected. So so now we now we see. Okay. The the our ports are up. We configured our we configured both ends. We configure this side and we configure this side. But if you go back to this in right here, it'll tell us that two zero is connected. So this is incorrect. So we'll have to either change this at a two zero or we have to change it on our end. So what we'll do is now um, we'll just, we'll go back here um, and we'll just delete this. And we'll change the wire setup to match exactly how it's already set up. So we'll go here, we're gonna use zero, zero, and we'll go here and also use zero, zero. And now when this is set up, hopefully, this should change the state. And as we can see here, the state is now up, up. So if we run the command again, we'll see, the port is up, and if you go on to here, the port's going to be up. So now the port's up. Um, layer one looks good. Um, now what we can do is we can just do a straight, um, you know, one nine two setup. So I don't know what that was all about, but uh, ping one nine two dot one six eight dot o dot one or dot o dot two. Ping the neighbor and see what happens. And we can see pings work. We run it again and the ping work on that side. And we'll check the R2 side and see if we can ping the neighbor as well, which we should because that's how pings work. They come back, so this is gonna work as well. So now we've we've troubleshooted L1. Now, now what we're gonna do is, now we're just gonna go for the kill. We're gonna see if we can, if that solved the problem, we're gonna see if we can ping from here to here because that's the whole point of this. We wanna pay, be able to ping from R1 to R3 and we'll go from there. So now we're on R1. Now we're gonna to try to ping R3. 192.168.0.6. So this is what we're trying to ping. This is, let's see if it works. And it's the moment of truth, it doesn't work, right? So now what we'll have to do is we're gonna log into R2 and now we're gonna check layer one again. So we're gonna go and see what is going on here. So we're gonna go log in. And the port is up on this side, but this side is added and down, so we'll go ahead and configure. So you can see, if a layer one is down, there's no point in checking. That's why I like to go, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check layer one on everything before I even test, test any pings. This is, it's pointless to check. So now what we'll do is we'll do interface, fast ethernet, zero slash one. Uh, oh, it's supposed to be one zero, sorry. Okay, so here I'll do a no shut. And it had no IP address in it, so we'll go ahead and configure an IP address. So we'll do IP address 192.168.0.1.5, sorry, 255.255.255.252. And keep in mind, guys, I got this from here. This is where we get it from, so it's 192.168. It's always good to verify, just to double check, and it looks good. So we can go and add that there. We'll click end. We'll do a show run interface, fast ethernet, uh, zero or one zero. And we can see the IP address is configured and it's on one zero. So uh, we'll do the last side as well. We'll do a show interface description, add them in down, right? No point, in it. we always have to turn up the port, do a no shut, uh, sorry, go interface, we'll go interface, fast ethernet zero, zero. So zero, zero. 
and we will do a no shut and we'll configure the IP address as well as 192.168.0.6.255.255.252 and as you can see here I added two S's unfortunately and that doesn't work actually three S's so that should work then um, at this point now I'll just go and try and try to ping this IP 192.168.0.5 and we'll see what comes up and we can see the pings work so just to verify what we just did we configured the we turned up the ports on this side on this side this side on this side but remember this side had an incorrect port configuration it was connected to four, uh, two zero uh, the actual wire but we couldn't really see it from our end so we had to do show node information so if we go to show node information you can see here it was connected to two zero but now we moved it from two zero to one zero or to zero zero and now we're all good so layer one looks handy dandy the pings are working now all we need to do is we want to ping from here to here so we'll go back to r1 uh r1 here and we'll do a ping this ip so we'll do a 192 that 168.0.6 dot to see what happens. As you can see, we're not able to ping, right? And we'll do another way of checking. We'll do another uh, trace route. 192.168.0.6 dot and see what happens. As you can see, nothing comes up. Nothing comes up, right? So we first have to see the problem, what's going on. So if you guys know, if you're trying to ping within different subnets, you're going to have to have some sort of routing, okay? Um, default routes are not going to work. So what you're going to have to do is you're either going to, you know, create some sort of a dynamic routing protocol or some sort of static routing protocol. So in our case, I think it's best to just do a quick static route, and that should be able to knock it out for us. So um, we'll start off with, on this side and see if that makes a difference. So we'll go into R1. All right, we'll kind of take this away from us. Control shift, I think it's control shift six, I think, or option six. Yeah, I keep forgetting how to exit out of this, but um, there we go. Okay, guys. If you ever want to exit out of a prompt like this, that just it's, it's going to keep going forever. You want to do Control Shift Six, and that will take you out. So um, I keep forgetting to do that, but yeah, that's that's the best way to get out. So all right, all right. So now at this point, we're going to have to create a static route. So the best way of doing that is we'll go on to R1, and we'll go ahead and do a configure terminal, and we'll do IP route, um, and then we'll IP route it to the IP. We wanted to so we this IP or what we could do we could just do it straight to the to the subnet network address so that's going to be four so with with IP uh, with static routes you always want it to be the the network address you never want it to like actually put the physical the actual address otherwise it's not going to work so we'll just do that and we'll do 255 255 255 that 252 and we'll put the next hop next so the next hop our neighbor IP would be this IP so it'd be 192.168.0.2. So now this should work, and that should configure the static route going from here to here. So we'll go ahead and try to run the ping and see if that works. And as you can see, the ping does not work. So uh, don't get frustrated at this point. Now you want to, now we want to run a, run a trace route and see maybe if it's going one way but not coming out the other way. So uh, that's six. All right, so it's getting through here, but as soon as it gets here, it, it doesn't it doesn't pass by. So what I presume we should do is configure. Um, configure the static right on the side as well and that should probably solve the issue 
So we'll go ahead and go into R3. And what we'll do is we'll do a configure terminal. We'll do a IP route 192.168.0.0. Keep in mind, we have to do the, the network address and go to 252. And then from here, we'll do a the next hop address, which would be this IP. Be 192.168.0.5. Now that's configured. Now let's just go straight for the IP and see if we're able to ping it. So, and there we go. So now we're able to ping um, past the whole network at this point. So if you go back to R1, we'll try to ping 192.168. And this should work now. So problem has been solved. Uh, we're able to now ping from R1 to R3, but what was the whole method that we went through? The first step was, okay, we turn up all the ports. Okay, all the ports were turned up, but this port happened to still be down. Why was it down? We went to show node information, and we noticed that it was connected to the wrong port. So now we have to physically change the port to make it match this. So when we change that, the port came up. Then we configure the IPs. These IPs ended up working. The IPs from here to here ended up working. So uh, layer, layer 3 was working locally. But now when we try to ping from different subnets, we notice, okay, it's not working. It's probably a routing issue. And we decided that we saw that there's no routing protocols added. So we can, if we wanted to, we can do a show route um, or show IP route. And now we can see the static routes coming in over here. Um, but the, but the, but the problem was there was no static routes, or there was no. There was only directly uh, directly connected routes that were actually being configured, or that were all, that were being added. The connected route and the local routes, but there's no static route at all. So that's why we we're never able to ping it. So we ended up adding the the uh, the routes on R3 and ended up running it on R1, and now we're able to ping it and everything looks good. So the whole process is that. And if you want to sort of document this, you can like get a notepad get, or what I recommend is like have like some sort of one Microsoft OneNote was really good, and just do troubleshooting session and talk about like what went wrong um also talk about you know obviously we fixed layer one and talk about like how how the static routes you know you configured ended up making it work that kind of stuff that you document and then whenever you run into an issue similar to this you can always go back to that notepad and see okay this was the issue then we can go from there so with that being said guys i mean this is a typical troubleshooting session i wanted to keep it very simple um but this is what everything kind of starts from it always starts with layer one you work, go your way up and obviously there wasn't any vlans in this so really layer two wasn't really involved but um i want to say thank you guys for tuning in this far if you guys have tuned in um, this is what a typical troubleshooting session looks like so if you guys enjoy the video give it a like if you like if you want to see more videos please subscribe i'll create more content like this and uh by the way i did create a discord i'll leave it down in the description below um feel free to join we're going to be talking about network engineering stuff anything related to that you guys can chat with each other if you want so uh uh, I want to say thanks to everyone who tuned in so far and uh, peace.